Hi, I'm Margie Abbott, and um, I've homeschooled for uh, since the 1980s, and I have six children, and uh, they all learned math differently, but uh, it was always a little challenge when we would have that struggling math student, and then I began to help other parents and found out they had struggling math students, and so I could look and look for something that would help them to work with. Some of my boys were really hands-on and needed something that was a little more... Um, they would adapt to that and the standard math program just didn't do that. So I was really excited when I met Dr. Dale and found out that he had developed something that would really help. So um, so when I've met that parent that says, okay, I gotta have something different, it's not working, what does that parent do? Well, as you know, uh, Margie, the um, we I believe that if you're going to teach a child math successfully, the very first thing you have to do is get what I call their psychology straight. The child has to enjoy learning it and want to learn it and look forward to learning it. Okay. And, and so you, you, you don't want to, it's not a game, but it has the qualities of a game. It's something where they can have success, they're, they're, they practice a lot, they get a lot of good feedback. And then the most important thing is the content has to be selected so that they see the relevance of it and they can understand it and they're ready for it. And so uh, we take a child, usually, the way we start all of our students is we teach them how to use a scientific calculator. It's a $10 calculator. It's a wonderful tool. And they love it because it's, it's easy to do. It's, it's, it's got the elements of a game. You're doing this, you're doing that, and, and you're having success. You're getting positive feedback. And we give it to them through the process of our teaching. But you, as the homeschool parent, gives it to them by being a coach and cheering them on. And every time they learn a new thing, of, oh, look what I learned here! I know how to, I know how to do this. And they they show you what they can do, and and and, and show you how they do the exercises, and you compliment them on it. And uh, pretty soon it gets their psychology turned around. And once that happens, then then what you need to do is teach them the right topics in the right sequence. And that's usually not done. The standard math curriculum that most programs follow, which has evolved over over a hundred years, is really not a good curriculum because it has a lot of things in it that are premature, very difficult, a lot of obsolete material, by the way, that they teach just because they started doing it a hundred years ago and they still do it, but it's of no value today. And so the, the pedagogy, which is the, the methodology of teaching to get him to have success and then the proper content are the keys to that and then uh, it, it's rare then that a student doesn't uh, become a mass success. Well you get on a big point of talking about being relevant because I hear a lot of uh, parents say well my child just doesn't even understand why they need to learn this. How is this going to help me in my life? And, and so they don't even want to do it because they don't see the relevance so can you like speak to the to how you think that you help them find it relevant what they're learning? Well yes uh, most children and most people are really quite intelligent and they have a very good idea of what might be relevant and important. And so we start out by teaching them, as I said, first how to use a calculator to do the arithmetic. That relieves the burden of all of the manual calculations that are so boring and error prone. And wow, I can, if I want to take a square root, I've got to do this and it's done. And then we start teaching them some basic algebra that they're going to need uh, to solve certain problems, but there's only about eight lessons all together because there's not very much algebra you need for practical math. And we tell them we're going to teach you practical math. Then we teach them some geometry and it's how long should something be? What should be the area? What should be the volume? And they see the, the, the value of that. You know, if you're going to go out and buy carpet or you're going to do some carpentry, you need to know how long something should be okay. or, or what should the area or the volume be. And that's what we teach them. Not proving theorems, not a bunch of esoteric stuff that, that clearly will not probably be of value to them. Mm -hmm. And then, believe it or not, uh, they, 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 they learn during this process that triangles are very important in construction. But to solve triangle problems, many times algebra and geometry are not adequate. So we teach them some trigonometry. But just the trigonometry to solve triangles. And because they've got the calculator, it's very easy. In fact, trigonometry, the first time through it, is easier, really, than the geometry and algebra, once you know that. So they, they see the relevance of it, and, and that's what we do with what we call the practical math foundation, and that really gets them a grounded.
I really related to the construction things. My husband ran a construction business, and one of our sons that struggled could walk outside and look on the roof and tell you what pitch, and he'd say he knew that A squared plus B squared equals C squared, but he wouldn't have been able to tell you what theorem that was or no. anything. He just understood the practical side. Exactly. And, and, and I think this would have really, would have really helped. Yeah, we don't emphasize the names and the, and the terminology. We emphasize how to solve the problem mm -hmm. and how to do something that you recognize, hey, this, this might be something I can use sometime when I'm trying to do something. So, um, so how does a parent overcome those fears the kids have? Because lots of times by this point they felt like maybe you know they're afraid that they can't do math or, you know. Well, there. If, if if you buy our program, you're hiring me to be the teacher first of all. Mm -hmm. So you as a parent, you're going to be a coach. You don't need to know math. Mm -hmm. You just need to be able to coach your child and give them the feedback they need, approval, and that sort of thing, and make sure they get logged into the computer and they're not having a technical problem, and then monitor their progress. And of course. Uh, we keep track of their progress in a learning management system so you know exactly what they're doing. Uh, then, uh, the way they're motivated is because when I start teaching the calculator, it's kinesthetic, it's doing it, it's fun. Mm -hmm. And they begin to get feedback that uh, people like to do something they're successful at. That's all right if you struggle in the beginning, but then when you learn it and you can master that particular thing, then you feel good about it. And so they are really climbing the ladder one step at a time, and every rung they climb, they feel even better than before, and it's just, and, it, and so it changes their psychology pretty quickly. I think starting them with the calculator training is important from a psychological viewpoint, as well as a practical viewpoint, and that's what we did. So, um, every once in a while, like when I would tutor math years ago, I'd run into a lot of times I'd get a kid in algebra, and they didn't know any, they didn't know their multiplication tables, they didn't know their... Uh, fractions, decimals, and percents, and when they would get in an algebra problem, they had all those coming at them at once, and they would get all frustrated because they're still trying to figure out what seven times eight is or whatever. So how would you deal with a student that was at that point as far as related to this? Well, first of all, they're going to do all the arithmetic with the calculator. So they don't have to know what seven times eight is because the calculator will tell them if they don't know. Mm -hmm. Now, we do recommend that you do learn, if you didn't know it already, we assume that they probably know the multiplication table, but if they don't, the best way to learn it is to use a calculator to play with it. In fact, I, I start my own uh, grandchildren with a little calculator, a one dollar calculator, and use that as, instead of flashcards, to learn addition or multiplication. Because it's, it's, that's just a memorization process to learn the multiplication table, for example. And Traditionally, in the old days, we use flashcards and things like that. Well, the calculator does the same thing. You say seven times eight. Now, what's the answer? Well, and so then you go, oh, well, well, let's see. And so they, they guess at it. Well, hit the equal. Oh, they get it right. They didn't. And make games out of it. You want to make math as much like a game as you can. So, and being a game means that you're doing something and getting feedback. You make a lot of mistakes. We tell them that. You're going to make a lot of mistakes when you do math. That's okay. That means you're learning. It's like if you're playing a sport. You're going to fumble the ball a lot. You're going to, if you're learning to play basketball, you're dribbling and you're going to make a lot of mistakes. That's fine. That's learning. That's how you learn. And we tell them that. Don't don't feel bad about a mistake. Learn from it and then just keep practicing and you get better and better. And they, they love it and pretty soon their psychology's right and away they go. I'm pretty sure if one of my children were here today, I would say, they would, if I said, how do you get better at anything? They would say, practice, practice, practice. Absolutely. Because if they'd say, I'm not good at that, I'd say, well, you must need some practice, practice. Well, practice. in fact, we, we, we advise our students to probably spend 80% of their time practicing. Now, some of that practice is on the current topic they're learning, and that's where they're making lots of mistakes because they're still learning the topic. And then they finally master it, and they take the quiz to prove to themselves and to us that they learned it. But then we say also spend some time going back and practice what you've already learned because there's an old use it or lose it thing. You might learn something today, and if you don't use it for a week or two, you forget it. But if you come back and practice it several times, there's no one size fits all, but I would say that a lot of things, you've got to practice them over a period of time, maybe 10 times before they become really solidified. So with this program, they have the accessibility to do that. I know with some of the online programs, once you've passed something, you're, you really don't get to go back, but then, then, yours, then get rid of it immediately. <laughs> so uh, that, that's, that allows a bad, that's bad pedagogy. We yeah. call it pedagogy. Yeah. Absolutely, get rid of that. Yeah. So, so this would allow them the opportunity to go. Oh, I need to go back and review. Well, it. yes, because what will happen is they'll go back onto a previous uh, topic, and they'll take some of the exercises and do them, and they and they, they can't they forget. Well, then they got to go watch the video again. 
where I teach them. And absolutely, that, that has to be available to them from that point forward. So what, um, so you've covered a little bit about, you know, like, uh, so if they don't know the basics, go over again, like, what basics they would need to know before this. You said that they can learn, they can't use the calculator to learn those multiplications. Well, we call this, we call this a post-elementary program, and what we assume a student knows is the number system, the decimal number system. And you got to know that 327 is 3 times 100 plus 2 times 10 plus 7, and also fractions. We assume they know that, and we assume they know basic arithmetic addition, subtraction, multiplication. And by the way, we review that in what's called pre-algebra because a lot of times kids are confused on negative numbers, for example. Okay. Or they don't understand the number line and how things line up. So we actually review it. But we, we think of it as a review. Where this is not a program for second graders right. or third graders. We actually have a, a program we recommend that helps young ch children use uh, learn their addition and that sort of thing. But it's not one of our programs. It's something we recommend. Oh, okay, that sounds awesome. So, um, now, um, I think that's what we want. All we need to cover with the struggles, but we'll be talking some more about some other things. All right? Sure. Have a great day.